Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm excited today to have my husband, Dustin Stumbling Bear, with me. And today is his book birthday. You want to show him your book? I am Kiowa, written by Dustin Stumbling Bear, illustrated by... Tokeo Wasiu Richardson. Thanks. So Dustin, we all want to know what has this experience been like for you? Stressful, very. <laughs> but also a lot of fun and certainly interesting in that I have was surprised more at the amount of people that have been sh excited for the book to come out and been supportive of it in pre-orders. And that was more than I had expected. Certainly blew out my preliminary figures for what I had expected before the book went on sale. Can you give us a description of what this book is about and then how you decided that this was the story you were wanting to tell? Okay, so that's kind of a longer story. When I was a child in the USD 497 school district, which is in Lawrence, Kansas, I went to fourth through sixth grade at Schwegler Elementary School my brother was in second through fourth grade and at the end of that first year when I was in fourth grade my mother picked my brother and I up from school we had our regalia in the car and we went over to another school Sunset Hill Elementary and we put on our regalia and we're in front of a fifth grade class our class full of fifth graders and we talked about our Kiowa heritage, our Kiowa history. My mom talked a bit about the tribes that we interacted with, whether it was through trade, war, raids. And then we talked a bit about our regalia. We shared uh, some of our dances, our war dances. We even shared a two-step. And then that was kind of the end of the presentation. We did that for a couple years throughout the school district at every school. And then we went up into the, moved up to Northwest Minnesota and continued those presentations for a few more years. And I decided to take that first presentation and make it into a child, children's book. This one right here. And it's just going through some of the things that I was just talking about, where we got together and talk a bit about the regalia and those things for people, for children to understand our culture. And a few things brought me to this point of wanting this story, and one of them was I wanted to write and, and put out a public or publish a book because she kept telling me I needed to do it, by the way. And I wanted to do something that I could get out quickly. I have a fantasy novel that I've written, but I need to get it in an editor's hands. Well, that's going to take time. But this, I can work with an illustrator, and we can hammer out a pretty good story in a pretty short order. And having interacted with other natives in the community, hearing some of the youth in our local community not really understanding their co-native culture, or understanding how to do things like beading, I thought this book might be real necessary to help them understand that they can find themselves and share it not just within their family but also with their fellow classmates. And I was also reading a book by Thomas King called The Inconvenient Indian. One second, I'm gonna go grab that. Here in Booktube, we like props. So I was reading a book by Thomas King called The Inconvenient Indian, and there's a section he talks about the live Indian versus the dead Indian versus the legal Indian, and it's a bit about identity and who we are and how do we define ourselves. And I thought being able to share who we were was a very powerful story that he is talking about in that book, and so that was another factor that led me into this particular story. And I also wanted to make sure there was kind of a teaching tool for teachers across this across the country to be able to have an introduction to discussing Native American culture. So the book is kind of written with that. It's kind of a primer, if you will. It's not an exact of all Kiowa culture or all Natives or all Plains culture, but it's just that introduction to get people to see some things, get thinking, and ask questions. So Dustin, do you want to share what the process of this was? What kind of How long has this taken? From conception to publishing, I'd say it's going to be about a year. And it starts really with the story. What story did I want to tell? I mapped that out. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted each page to tell in the story. 
and then I had to find an illustrator. And that was actually a little more difficult than I thought because I wanted this story about Native Americans in Lawrence, Kansas, not only be written by a Native American, me, I wanted it to be illustrated by a Native American. And I wanted to make sure that that illustrator was telling the story I, the way I wanted it to be done. And luckily I met someone in town through a local collective of artists and named Monique Mercurio. And I was describing this book to her. That was about November, November, December, end of November, early December of 2023. And she walked me over to the little store they had together at the time and showed me some of his artwork. And I said, that's it. That's exactly what I want this book to look like. She got me in touch with him. Unfortunately, they had gotten COVID at the moment. So we had to wait a month before we could sit down and actually start hammering out what I wanted the book to look like or what the image is. And I will say this as someone who was thought I was helping my artist, I was drawing out what I wanted my pages to look like. And TK was absolutely, yeah, he was funny because he just looked at me and said, no, that's what you're hiring me for. You just write what you want the page to look like, which right i should lean into what i'm good at and let him lean in to what he's good at rather than trying to do all of it and granted my images were terrible um the reason we hired an artist for this part of that book that took about three months because we gave him time to be able to draw the images but he also worked full time at another job so it's you know we have to manage that creative process along with our day-to-day -day jobs i think all of us who are writing or creating in some way experience that time crunch and certainly my scripts for the images were what I wanted but in some cases I was kind of asking him to make a movie per page and we had to scale back some of what I wanted and I would say if that's how you're approaching working with an artist that you're you're the writer and you're not the illustrator be willing to give listen to that illustrator and what they're saying they can and can't do and because they're going to come up with some ideas they're going to look at that script and say maybe I can't do that but I can come up with something else and TK had done that he came up with some really great alternatives that I feel made the book better and after that process the three months we had to sit down together and actually rewrite some of the pages because the images had changed due to my wanting a movie rather than just a book and so I had to rewrite some of the, the actual story, but not change it, but more just some some words and sentences move from one page to another one. And that that's what I mean by rewriting the, the some of the book pages. After that, I don't know, the formatting, because that was about May. We got the image physical images in May, and then we had to find somebody to digitize, digitize them. them. Yeah. And man, that is hard to find somebody who has a good quality scanner for emit for artwork. And we we had to go through that. So that's something. You, if you're again a tip to those who might be wanting to work with an illustrator hard you know, be real hard and firm about wanting them to digitize that as opposed to you doing it because it is another step and if you're self-publishing a book which is what we did more steps just just a pain in the butt and you're paying them for it from there it took us about two months to format because we then we went on vacation in july on a family vacation so that put the book on the back burner and then just random little pieces kept putting us back by like a week because I'd wanted this book to come out by the end of June and then we didn't have to reformat something so now it became maybe mid-July and then okay we're maybe the first of August to finally okay we're publishing this the first of October we're getting our first proof copy in mid August yeah, mid -August. it was mid-August yeah. and from there, we went through the revision process. We've had a total of five proof copies, with the fifth one being a final copy that is exactly all the changes we wanted and all the f fixes. You know, there's a graphical error with uploading one of the pages. 
one of the barcodes got messed up on another print run. The formatting for our bios was off on one of them, so we had to shorten that. You know, little things like that. And thank goodness for proof copies. So give yourself the time. Number one, one, one month is not good. I'd say two to three. And use that proof copy time. Really go through, pour through it. And for all of us that write, we love our stories, man. Mwah, chef's kiss every single page. But be willing to have that critical eye when you're going and looking at those pages and catching those spelling errors, catching those grammatical errors, seeing that, oh, I used this word when I meant to use this word, but there, there, as an example that we did in my book that not, we didn't catch until the third proof copy. Like that's, that's how into your critical eye you're going to need to be when you're doing a self-review for a self-publishing book uh, or when you're self-publishing a book. And then that got us to this point where now, yeah, the book's coming out, it's for sale, people are already buying it. In fact, we went out and someone was trying to buy my book and I had to tell them it's not for sale yet, which was really awesome. And yeah, it's kind of not overwhelming, but it's certainly like, wow, this, there's so much excitement that I knew it was a cool story to tell. I just didn't know people were going to be this excited about it. Why did you choose to self-publish? This will sound kind of screwy, but as a Native American, I've lived my life where the average Caucasian is going to tell me how I'm supposed to be Native, tell me how I should talk, tell me what I should know, you should do this, you should know this, how about this, how come you don't know these people, how come you don't know that thing? Which I always find rich coming from the people who work to, you know, eradicate it from us. So... What was the question again? Why did you choose to self-publish? When I'm talking about that control, I'm talking about being talked down to. And when it came to my story, I didn't want anyone telling me it needed to be told in a certain way. It needed to be edited in a certain manner. It needed to be presented with certain language. I am going to tell my story because I am Native. And I see too much of books out there that you can tell have been edited to tell a certain perspective in a certain manner. And there's even books out there by white people about natives that are lauded as these great works of understanding native voices and native culture. Well, I don't wanna fall into that. I don't wanna end up in that publishing world where they're telling me what my identity is. I'm gonna be put it out there. And so it sounds kind of narcissistic, yet coming from that history and that background, I felt the need to self-publish so that my story was out there. And also, I get to choose the artist. I get to say it's a Native American artist that is doing it, and that we're going to set the standards, and we're going to set the boundaries for what this art is and what this story is representing. Because too much of a lot of modern cinema, I'll just say it, our stories as natives, people want to hear them so long as it's happening on the reservation. But a lot of us don't live on reservations, and we're still Native American, and our stories are still as valuable as those that live on reservations. So why, why are those the only valuable stories that get picked up for movies, television, books? And I'm tired of it. So I wanted to get in the way of that, get in the face of that mindset and that mentality in American society, and I knew I had to do that through self-publishing. Thank you. Is there anything else that you would like the viewers to know? Oh, that's a hard one. You can take your time. Surprise question for him. This is a lot of fun, but also a lot of work. I will say um, on the media end of it, trying to work things out, I'm just doing this. As the term goes for in the writing world, I'm a pantser. And that usually does work for me, but if you're going to do some self-publishing for your media, outreach definitely do local your local papers to get some coverage to get your name out there also have a good story to go with it and be willing to meet and broaden it right so don't send out a press release to 10 cities and only you know all of them respond to you and want to interview but you can only interview for two so why just send them all out at the same time stagger that release schedule uh, pre up to the book you know, build up for that book release like what we've been doing uh, generate that excitement I that's what I wanted to do and yet when you see it it's still like whoa it, it the, the thing's working the thing we said we wanted to have happen is happening like this is so cool 
and market in your way how you want and be comfortable. I despise social media. I may eventually pick up an account on an alternate set that's not linked to me, but I really just, I just don't like delving into that place and I don't see the need for it. If you know how to use media, you know how to use companies. I mean, we are using social media right here with YouTube and talking to people so that you can understand the process that we went through and some of the inspiration and how you might want to go through that for yourselves and lessons learned pitfalls because certainly for a children's book i thought it was going to be easy we both thought it'd be a six month process yeah you did you were with she was with me on the june release date so she's sitting here shaking her head no remember i said november and we started working on this in the, like december january so she's shaking her head no but she was in on that six month release date she thought we could do this that quick but it was harder than we thought there's the formatting there's the little like i said there's little mistakes that happen when you're uploading your files that you might not catch until you get that proof copy and you're sitting there going like when the hell did this happen well now you've got to upload find that file find that mistake and if you only gave yourself a little lead time on top remember we're talking about self-publishing so you're in charge of your marketing also well now you're trying to market while you're trying to fix your book and that that was a little stressful for both of us yeah. not in a negative fashion but certainly you know, like we kept thinking, oh, let's make sure we remember this for future books. Okay, we've learned this and for future books. This is the thing we want to do. So in a way, there was a lot of lessons learned that I'm looking forward to doing more of these books as we go forward, whether it's children's books, horror anthology, fantasy book, or a memoir of time served in Iraq. I hope we can use those experiences from this children's book to make those other ones a much easier process for publishing. Yeah. And just for you guys to know, he basically just told you all the other works that he is planning on. <laughs> so, there's a reason why I've been pushing him all this time to write. I'm like, you're a great uh, writer, do it. Just do it. So now I have the time and the impetus and it's been a lot of fun, especially when you get one out there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird to be able to say I'm a published author to people. It's kind of cool. So. so, anything else? No, this is a lot of fun. All right, so again, I am Kiowa. Release date, the 1st of October, the same day that this video is coming up. You can buy this from your indie bookstore, and it's on every other book retailer platform. If you want to read a story about joy and getting to share who you are, pick this up. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.